close your eyes and imagine a place drifting out in the universe. A place where the properties of time behave differently than what we are used to. You probably think of places near black holes, where the laws of physics and the entirety of space-time is warped into an unrecognisable and unknown property. Or maybe you think of places near the edge of the universe, where dark energy expands the borders of the cosmos at speeds faster than light, where humans will never be able to explore and truly get a grasp on what life is like trillions of miles away from the Milky Way. But what if we told you that a place existed much closer than the edge of space or a black hole in a galaxy far, far away? What if we told you that place was planet Earth itself, where the deepest depths of the core are 2.5 years younger than the surface? How could that be, you ask? The answer is simple, gravitational time dilation. From there, however, it becomes so much more complex. It might be mind-blowing to consider how one part of a planet is a few years younger than another part of the same planet, but that actually only scrapes the surface of gravitational time dilation, one of the many mysteries waiting to be solved in our galaxy and in the galaxies beyond. Gravitational time dilation is defined by the Britannica definition as follows. The slowing down of a clock, as determined by an observer who is in relative motion with respect to that clock, due to the gravitational potential changing as the clock moves farther away. In other words, time will move slower, even by a fraction of a microsecond, the closer you become to a source of gravitation like Earth. It's why if they were an atomic clock both at the Earth's core and at the top of Mount Everest, they would be two and a half years apart after a few billion years of counting. Many people have probably heard of the similar phenomena known as the Twin Paradox, a theoretical study in which a set of twins are given a clock, one twin remains on Earth in a non-inertial or non-moving state, the other twin is then put into a rocket ship and flown around for a set amount of time before being returned. According to special relativity, the non-moving twin would have elapsed less time than the moving twin, making one older than the other. While the twin paradox is a subset of special relativity and the laws of motion, gravitational time dilation is a subset of both special relativity and general relativity. In fact, Gravitational time dilation is only understood because of the words by the father of general relativity himself, Albert Einstein. It was 1907, two years since the initial publication of Einstein's theory on special relativity. He realised that special relativity wasn't a suitable enough explanation when considering the effects of gravity or acceleration. For instance, everything on Earth is affected by the laws of our planet's gravity feeling the gravitational field. Specifically, the acceleration of the Earth's gravitational force is 9.8 meters per second. Thus, if you put a person in a room with zero influence of Earth's gravity and accelerated that room by 9.8 meters per second, the person wouldn't be able to distinguish the movement as either bound to gravity or simply acceleration. This paradox was followed by Einstein's musings on light's behavior in a similar situation. Without gravity, a light shining across the room in an accelerating state would bend downward, just as it would with a gravitational speed, as long as they are a constant, comparable speed. Over a decade later, British scientists studied the position of stars next to the Sun during a solar eclipse in South Africa, and observed the effects of light and how the gravitational field bends it. It was then, Einstein's theory was accepted by everyone, including much of the general public, and he was hailed a genius. With the theory of gravity and its effects on general relativity, astronomers and researchers alike could dive deeper into its role on Earth, the rest of the universe, and space-time itself. In 1959, 
Canadian-American physicists Robert Pound and his graduate assistant Glenn Rebka Jr. were curious to find further observational proof of Einstein's theory of relativity and the effects gravity has on light. To maximize their potential, they decided on a gravitational redshift experiment. Gravitational redshift is the phenomenon where photons and other electromagnetic waves decrease in energy the further it travels out of a gravitational well. Stars, planets and moons are all examples of gravitational wells. To carry out the experiment, Pound and Rebka travel to the top of the left tower at Jefferson Laboratory on Harvard University's campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. There, they admitted a series of gamma rays from their peak to the base of the structure, charting the frequency by a receiver placed at the bottom. To avoid gamma ray scattering, the two physicists sent it through a mylar bag, also packed with helium, absorbed via iron-57, one of the four stable isotopes of natural, elemental iron. The gamma rays were placed in a loudspeaker cone and sent 22.5 meters downward to the basement where the iron-57 was located. The results of the experiment resulted in a gravitational blue shift. A blue shift is just the opposite of a red shift, with a decrease in wavelength correlating with an increase in energy and frequency of electromagnetic waves. Not only was the experiment the launching point for new tests of highly specific general relativity research, the gravitational blue shift of gamma rays also revealed the inherent prediction of general relativity, that clocks will either be faster or slower depending on their place near or within a gravitational field. A little under 20 years after the pound rebecca experiment, NASA teamed up with the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory to take the studies of general relativity from Earth into outer space. On June 18, 1976, they launched Gravity Probe A from the NASA Wallops Flight Center in Wallops Island, Virginia, using a scout rocket. The probe reached an apex of 10,000 kilometers and remained in the cosmos just five minutes shy of two hours. While the main goal of Gravity Probe A was to conduct further research into the equivalence principle, the mission also shed additional light on gravitational time dilation. As the probe fell back to Earth, instruments measured the atomic rate of time passing whilst Gravity Probe A met a higher gravitational potential. Astronomers accomplished this by placing a maser in the probe and an identical maser in a stationary position on Earth. A maser is a special device in which excited atoms stimulate the radiation emissions and create coherent electromagnetic waves. These specific masers, called hydrogen masers, are known for their incredibly accurate signals, forming 1.42 billion cycles per second. These signals are also very stable, coming in at one part in a quadrillion. Due to the accurate and stable nature of the gravity probe's masers, it equally resembled a clock that only drifts by less than two seconds once every 100 million years. At the peak of its ascent into space, the maser clock should have run 4.5 parts 10 billion times faster than the one on Earth, or one second every 73 years. Researchers back on Earth then countered the oscillations of the maser as ticks of a clock and charted the frequency measurements as the elevation changed up above giving a physical representation of gravitational time dilation in real time. Despite the use of Earth's gravitational field on the edge of the planet's atmosphere, the results were only more accurate than the original pound rebecca experiment by 0.01%. Nonetheless, time dilation was all but confirmed. Since the early experiments confirming general relativity and its impact on the relationship between time and gravity, other tests have been made to further our understanding of the mostly still unknown phenomenon. There was the Hafler Keating experiment and its various spin offs, of which the atomic clocks aboard aeroplanes were a little bit faster than the stationed clocks on the ground. These findings directly led to the realization that the clocks aboard global position systems and other satellites were very gradually ticking faster than the clocks used on Earth, and now have their internal clocks adjusted every few years. 
The Viking 1 lander on Mars has even conducted a few experiments using time signals and atomic clocks back on our home planet. Most recently, researchers have designed a laser system and an atomic clock accurate and stable enough to record a gravitational redshift between atoms in an area the size of a penic tip. When they trapped the atoms and conducted their test, they found a redshift difference of 10 quintillion. While it may sound like an unbelievably small number, that number is massive compared to the scale of the space involved. If researchers are able to zoom in the area by a factor of 10, they'd be able to see small enough and clearly acknowledge the whole of an atom's matter waves across space-time's curvature. At such a microscopic level, these findings would then allow physicists to discover the disruption of quantum coherence by gravity and how the classical laws of physics exist. Who knows, maybe one day mankind will evolve into an advanced technological civilization with the abilities to travel to black holes and cross the event horizon. Time would move so much faster around the black hole than it would on Earth. It would take billions upon billions of years for us to ever know what happened after the object crossed the event horizon. Event horizons are of a nearly infinite gravity, meaning they display almost infinitely faster than on Earth. Just one of the many mind-blowing thoughts about our universe, and the effect gravity has on space-time and the way in which we experience it. <laughs>